Uh, my name is Kelly Breivik. I am the head education coordinator at Brass Bell Music, and I am going to teach you about the baritone horn and euphonium. So the baritone horn and euphonium are two separate instruments, but they are played almost exactly the same way, with the exception that the euphonium requires a little bit more air in order to make a noise out of it. The reason why it requires more air um, is because this tubing here is a conical tubing. And what conical tubing means is that it starts off thin and then gets wider and wider as you go along the instrument all the way up until the bell. Whereas the baritone horn, this tubing will be the same throughout. So as skinny as it is over here, is as skinny as it's going to be over here. Of course, it's always going to have to open up when you get to the bell. Now the baritone horn and euphonium are both instruments that have a very deep, very loud, and very rich tone. For example, uh, the way that we make noise out of this instrument is we have to buzz through the mouthpiece, not blow. If you just blow, you just hear air passing. That's why we buzz, and the way that we buzz is we tuck the corners of our mouth in, and then we blow through our lips, which are slightly taut. But despite how taut your lips are, they always have to be relaxed, because otherwise it's not going to make for good playing. Uh, it'll make a very tight and very pinched sort of sound. Now, a fun thing about the mouthpiece, pretty much almost everything with playing the instrument is just between your mouth and the mouthpiece. And this is just the amplifier of whatever you're doing over here. So for example, whoops. you could even change the pitch without even touching these things called the pistons. So I'm not even gonna, you can see my hands are not on the pistons, no magic tricks here. And the way that we change the pitch is by adjusting our embouchure. Now, I've said this word a few times. Embouchure is the uh, way that we place our mouth and the muscles within our mouth in order to be able to create the sound that we're looking for. Uh, embouchure is to the baritone like um, holding a baseball is. You want to make sure that you cock your arm back. You don't want to have this sort of dropped, uh, you know, dropped elbow when you're trying to throw or when you're sitting, you want to make sure you're sitting upright, you know. So it's very, um, it's not very often that we think about our mouth muscles uh, because we don't usually train our mouth muscles for most things. However, we do have to train our mouth muscles for the baritone horn. Um, if you are someone who is, uh, likes to run or likes to talk a lot or has a lot of air in your lungs that you want to just, you know, get out into the world, well, the baritone horn is great because you need a lot of air in order to make this big, big sound. If you didn't have enough air, it would sound something like this. And we don't want that. Um, so, uh, once again, the baritone horn is a really great instrument uh, for someone who likes to uh, be loud and have something that is unique, but also something that's very versatile because the baritone horn and the euphonium are used in uh, pit orchestras, jazz bands, uh, symphonic orchestras, all, and marching bands, all sorts of different uh, uses. And they could be accompanying instruments, so they could give that nice low uh, bass beat, or they could be solo instruments and get the melody line. So there are a lot of reasons to play the baritone horn and euphonium. And I hope that you do choose this instrument because it really is a fantastic, beautiful instrument. And despite its size, it really is not that heavy. The case is more unwieldy than the instrument itself. This instrument, pretty light for all this brass that's on here. And in fact, a fun note about this instrument is that if you were to unravel all of this tubing, it would come to be about nine feet long. And we've got this all squished down to about two feet. So it's uh, made exactly for us to play it. Thank you so much.